Hello everyone, good morning, and welcome back to Let's Play Katamari Forever. Today we've got Wake Up the King, Roll Up Powerful Things and the King to Make a Super Giant. And as you can see in the bottom left there, we've got a new graphical filter, the comic book, so let's get started. The uh, main difference we'll be seeing between the comic book and what we're used to is that rather than being grayscale, the king's memories are in a bit of a sepia tone. But fortunately, this is actually the last time we'll be seeing the grayscale slash sepia version of the king's cosmos because if everything goes right this time, we're going to be regaining the king's memories, waking up the king, and that means any time from now on that we play any of the stages here in the king's cosmos, they will be in full glorious color as they should have been all along. No more putting up with this, but we've got one more stage like this before that happens. And so what are we doing this time? Well, I said we're waking up the king, we're rolling up powerful things, also the king. But what does that entail exactly? Well, let's find out. What are we doing here, king of all cosmos? There we go. The goal is to reach 10,000 kilometers and we have 12 minutes to do it. But, as you'll soon discover, both of those are actually just bold-faced lies. Um, Reaching 10,000 kilometers is not actually sufficient to complete this stage. If you get to 10,000 kilometers and then just stop playing, you will actually game over on this stage because that is not all you have to do. You also have to wake up the king. And we actually have more than 12 minutes to do that because once we reach a certain point, specifically the, the 10,000 kilometer point, we're going to be receiving two additional minutes of time to complete that goal. So really, these are just sort of benchmarks. I guess you could think of it as like phased objectives. Objective one is to within 12 minutes reach 10,000 kilometers, and then you have an additional two minutes plus whatever time you had left to wake up the king. So I guess it's not a total lie. Let's get that, ah, oh, I missed the royal present. That royal present's on the back of a bird. It's really hard to get because the bird flies away. But I'm not terribly worried about getting cousins and royal presents this time around because there are just so many of them that I'm just going to focus on completing the stage right now and then I'll go back and get whatever I missed. As you can see, we're in a sort of TV studio area. It's actually pretty easy to overlook this building even existing, or, or rather to like even notice that it's possible to go inside of this building. But if you do, you can get a lot of objects in here, including some that don't appear anywhere else in the game, so don't overlook it. It's a good place to get up to three meters, and I'm trying to find my way out now, and I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Where is the exit to this building? Oh, there it is. Okay. Kind of hard to see with everything so colorless, and the king alerts us that because we reached three meters, we can now go in that direction. But I'm not going directly there. I'm first getting this broken heart, and then making as many quick rolls as I can before that goes out. Much like the uh, Make the Moon stage, the ongoing version of the Broken Heart is extremely powerful here if used correctly, and it can actually jump you from one size category all the way to the next. You see there we went from 3 meters to 12 meters very quickly, so the King's alerting us that we can already move on to the next area, so let's do that. Yeah, this stage is um, the last of the Make, uh, make the Moon type stages. The last of the the large scale ones in which we'll be seeing lots of different areas but there are two more stages left after this one this is also the first of the two sort of like final boss stages because uh this one is all about rolling up the king of all cosmos and as you'll soon see the next stage is all about the robo king and of course there's one more final stage after those two so this is the third to last episode of this series i believe but no need to worry, we've got plenty left to do, particularly today we have a lot left to do because we're only at 26, 27 now meters, and the goal is 10,000 kilometers plus some. So a lot left to do, nine minutes to do it, and also I've got all those cousins and presents of course. But not a lot to talk about right now, just rolling up things, <laughs> seeing a little bit of lag there as we get up to a new size category. Yes, 370 powerful points, this is another one of those secondary objectives that is best kind of ignored because it's uh, th there's no point in going out of your way in order to try to discern which objects are powerful. You should just focus on getting larger. Though it is definitely possible to get um, a larger Katamari with a worse score on this stage if you just happen to not get any powerful objects, but that mostly comes down to randomness. Here's the second broken heart, not too far from the first one really, but it's the instantaneous variety. And that brings us up to our next size category, 60 meters, which means we can head over to America. So let's go ahead and do that, grab these American cones, which are really just uh, gray cones right now. 
little bit faded, but as you can see, once I roll them up, they are American themed. The, I guess this isn't really America we're going to. It's probably America we came from. I don't remember the Great Wall of China being in America, though maybe they moved it there recently, but I think I would have heard about that if they did. So, where else can we go? I, I guess I shouldn't have followed the Great Wall out in the ocean, because the pyramids are over this way, also, also recently moved to America, it would seem. So going to roll those up. Yeah, we've got a lot of rolling left to do before we make it to space, which is where we are ultimately headed, for the first time, really. We got to space once on a previous stage, but we were pretty much well grounded to the Earth, whereas this time around we're going to be rolling uh, outside of the Earth and getting much, much larger than the Earth, as you can uh, probably guess from the fact that we're going to be rolling up the King of All Cosmos, who is as large as the universe itself when he needs to be. <laughs> His size a little bit consistent, since he also sometimes appears on Earth as a smaller size, but no need to worry about that. Let's get this royal present while we're here. There's plenty of time to get royal presents, because, uh, if you see them anyway, because there's no shooting star on this stage, oddly enough. It's kind of confusing to me why there's not a comet on this stage, because, um, I mean, th there are actually two ways in which the comet could potentially be given out on this stage. They could make it for reaching 10,000 kilometers within a certain period of time, or for rolling up the king within a certain period of time. Probably the former, because, um... Uh, they don't really want to encourage you to get the king at the earliest possible opportunity because once you get the king, the stage ends. And so, like, the, the final goal of this stage is actually to get as large as you possibly can and then get the king, making it sort of like the, the sumo and campfire stages in that respect. So I guess making, um, making the comet based on the, the king would be a little bit counterintuitive in that respect. But anyway, I'm not complaining that there's no shooting star because there are plenty of other collectibles here, more than I'd like. So uh, one fewer to have to worry about here on the video is perfectly fine with me, but it does seem a little bit odd. In any case, I don't know um, whether I would actually be able to get it, uh, get the shooting star. I tend to finish this stage with plenty of time left to just roll around picking up things, but um, <laughs> I, I have a bit of a history of taking longer than usual once it comes around to actually recording the episodes. Anyway, also it would be a little bit counterintuitive to have a shooting star given that the time allotted increases at a certain point. That could be another reason why, um, why it's not done. It would be a little bit confusing um, to say that you have to finish the stage within a certain period of time, when that period of time might actually be the same as the starting time, like it might just be 12 minutes. But, in any case, enough talk about the shooting star. I'm rolling around here in this gray, gray ocean, trying to get up to three kilometers, because at three kilometers, I'm going to be moving beyond this area of the Earth to the larger Earth. And this is sort of the slowest part of the stage, because once you're this big, you're moving at a, at a glacial rate. Even the quick roll, as I can demonstrate here, barely boosts your speed at all. But, as you may remember from the previous largest stage we've been to, once you reach a certain size, the curvature of the Earth becomes visible and you can go anywhere on the planet. And at that point, we'll be moving much, much faster than we are right now, but right now we're on the upper bounds of this section of the stage, so everything's a little bit sluggish, but as soon as I reach three kilometers, right about now, everything fades to white and I have the freedom to go as fast as I want for as long as my quick rolls will last. And the quick roll here, which I just exhausted as I say that, is uh, absolutely essential because we're going to be wanting to explore as many continents as we can on our goal, uh, well, on our way to our goal of 10,000 kilometers from our current size of 300 or so kilometers, but it's not that hard. This is actually kind of a break after the last section in terms of difficulty, though there is a cousin walking around here somewhere, so I should probably make a point of finding him, M Mag the cousin, who, uh, Hangs around on top of some city or another, I'm not sure which one exactly, but he's around here somewhere. I'm sure we'll see him before uh, we reach 10,000 kilometers. But yeah, I'm just using quick rolls right now to go from continent to continent, picking up these, like, conical sections of ground wherever possible. Uh, in this case, jungles, but there are also mountains and things. Just whatever sort of landscape is available to me is what I want to be rolling up. Also, the, the clouds here are pretty nice. A lot of interestingly shaped clouds, bananas and trumpets and things. And those are quite large as well, so I'll be getting as many of those as I can. And as you can see, since I've been here, I've gone from 300 kilometers almost to 3,000 already. But no stopping there. There's Mag. I guess he's on top of uh, Los Angeles, so an American cousin. 
I wonder if he's uh, familiar with the Great Wall of China. I wonder if uh, that's where it is. But in any case, we've got Mag, so rolling around now, trying to get to the point where I can pick up larger land masses. The king says Mag put the E in digital. I don't, I don't understand that reference. Anyway, oh, I missed a, I missed a great line of dialogue from the King of All Cosmos earlier. I, w I must have not been paying attention to his dialogue. He refers to himself as the Demander in Chief, which is a fantastic title for him because not only is he sort of the Commander in Chief of space, but he's very, very demanding. <laughs> they basically, uh, everything you do in these games comes down to satisfying the demands of the King of All Cosmos. Okay, now at over 5,000 kilometers, meaning I'm half the size I need to be to reach space. But, I'm picking up larger and larger things, now that entire continents are joining the Katamari. You can see uh, what looks like uh, the United States there, so... <laughs> got some of the largest things, just picked up Antarctica, Palau, which is obviously much smaller. <laughs> Alright, what else have I got left? What is left on the Earth? I, I need just like a little over 100 more kilometers. There it is, thanks a lot Canada! And I'm off in space, look at this! And when you reach space, you immediately increase your size by nearly tenfold. Like, I went from um, 10,000 kilometers to like 60 almost instantly. And I think the game sort of just boosts that artificially when it puts you into space. I don't think I was actually rolling up anything to reach that size. Similar to how I'm not actually rolling up this royal present despite being right on top of it. Come on, royal present, what are you doing to me? Okay, well, in any case, now that we're in space, instead of rolling on the outside of a spherical object, we're actually rolling on the inside of a spherical object, this sort of firmament here. It's kind of hard to tell, but uh, I'm actually rolling up an incline at all times, because I am on the inside of a sphere. And if I continue in one direction for long enough, like I just did, I'll end up back where I started, see I'm on top of the Earth once again. And so while we're here, we can not only roll up a ton of stars and stardust, but I'm actually rolling up the uh, celestial bodies that I've created, on other stages in this game. If you pay attention to the names of the objects I'm rolling up, you'll see the exact names of planets right down to the titles that I gave them based on the uh, types of objects I rolled up. Like um, that no CFC's floating continent there that I just rolled up, I made on the uh, Katamari Sprinkler stage. Now, as you can see, the king of all cosmos is to the left, and when I stop, you can see that he um, is not actually stationary in that hammock of his, but he follows a circular orbit around the stage. And you'll actually want to look out for him, because like I was saying, at this point in the stage, you're just trying to get as large as possible, because I could probably get, yeah, especially now that I've gotten this uh, black hole, which is the next largest object on the stage, I can just get the king of all cosmos whenever I feel like it. I can go roll him over, wake him up, but there's no need to do that just yet, because there's still two minutes remaining on the clock, during which I can get larger simply by rolling around in space. <laughs> the stars here, almost like the snow on the snowman stage, where it doesn't feel like you're rolling up anything, but your size is increasing, but they are actually finite. You will eventually actually run out of stardust and tiny stars and things, but it'll take a while. I just rolled up the planet prints. Look at that object in the bottom left there. It's, it's the planet from the original Katamari Damashi. That's such a fantastic inclusion as an object in this game. Because you can see, like, the tree and the house, the, like, the little objects that you would use. Like, if you didn't play Katamari Damashi, the prince's planet filled the role of the storybook in this game, like the village square. And there were different objects on that planet that did different things, like saving your game or whatever. But in any case, I just woke up the King of All Cosmos. I didn't mean to just yet, but I didn't have a lot left to do anyway. We just blew his mind, scaped his mind. It's so clean you could eat off of it. Royal Rainbow! Yeah, and with that, only two stages remain in Katamari forever. But, before we move along, I still have all those cousins and presents to get. Oh, and speaking of which, I didn't even mention this, but uh, I'm currently playing, by request, Dip. And I've got the uh, Lollipop and Peacock uh, royal presents that I picked up last time on the hot stage. The hot stuff stage, that is. But yes, let's move along and see what cousins and presents we got this time, along with how well we did waking up the king and making that super giant Katamari. Mostly cosmos things, as to be expected. Also a lot of nature and clouds. As you can see, over 21,000 objects in total. Hopefully some powerful ones in there. <laughs> yeah, only a C in powerful, but an A in terms of size. 92 points in all. I'm pretty satisfied with that. I feel that that's a pretty typical score for this stage. And there's our first royal present. Guess what it is? Looks like a purse. And moving along, we also have... Uh, looks like a bunch of stars or something? Alright, well, welcome aboard, royal present. And anything else? Yep, we got some dangling cousins there. There's Ace, who was, uh, 
the uh, cousin on Eternal 3 in the original game. Also Mag, who is hanging out in Los Angeles. And now the star turn. Still have plenty of uh, cousins and presents left to pick up. We got the gigantic super giant worth 92 points. Uh, 1.7 million kilometers in size. Knocks the avocado right out of California rolls, the king says. Not sure that that's a good thing. They're kind of the best part. Actually, no. The best part of the California rolls, the seaweed, but... The avocado is pretty important. Anyway, at last, the king is back in the building. The royals rejoice, but... Robo King is redundant. His unsound heart goes bitter, batter, batty. With cosmic grievance, Robo King swells. Once again, with Cosmic Grievance, Robo King swells. That's the same line, twice in a row. Did it really disappear and then reappear, the same line? Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> there goes the prince, off to stop the Robo, Robo King from destroying the cosmos that he just worked so hard to rebuild. <laughs> and um, interesting thing happens here. If you go... Actually, I'll just show you once uh, the game finishes saving. Okay, here we are. If you return to the King's Cosmos and then uh, select a stage to replay it, it doesn't have to be uh, Wake Up the King, but any stage in particular, the King will try to stop you. He'll say, um, well, he'll say various things, but this is how Papa must have felt. Hello, the Cosmos. Wacky, but ultimately unamusing doom coming. Yes, to a theater near whoever made that bot. Oh, wowies, that's you. Go and fix it. Yeah, so he'll he'll say various things to try to remind you that there's a cosmos to save and that you need to go play the next stage, but he doesn't actually stop you. The game doesn't require that you go do the next stage immediately just because the plot demands it, but it's kind of funny that the, the king of all cosmos, who's now finally, after all this time, awake, actually has some things to say to you. But anyway, now that I've played the stage once, let's go back and pick up those four remaining cousins and those three remaining royal presents. First, we've got the goggles, which despite doing nothing are probably still worth getting. They're on top of that pesky bird near the start, so you're gonna have to use a quick roll to catch up to him before he has the chance to fly away. The candy, which makes a cousin's head look like a wrapped piece of candy, is uh, on top of a mountain near the rocket launch site. The royal mask, which is the mask from the original Katamari Damashi, is on this snowy island here, but good luck being able to make out from this video where exactly it is. It's actually inside the mountain. If you follow the river near the start of the stage, you'll find Lucha, the first cousin, who's a bit naked. Kenta the Senta is in the part of the stage that we skip over by getting the ongoing broken heart at the uh, 3 meter point, but uh, he's up on a bridge with some elephants. Havana circles the amusement park part of the stage. I'm not really sure how I managed to miss this cousin previously. And finally, Macho is in the European-styled part of the stage inside a sports stadium. It only took me two additional rolls on the stage to find all of these remaining cousins and presents, so like, all in all, not too bad. But that's all I have for today. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you next time for the penultimate episode.